Okay, so welcome back to part two of Uku Kanya by Mons. And uh, in the first video, we showed you how we unpacked the, the beat and all the elements that went into making a very minimalistic but super funky track. And in this video, now we want to come back and talk about what we did with the vocal processing, how we uh, track the vocals, process the vocals, arrange the vocals, mix the vocals, everything vocals. How are you doing, Mons? Good, good, man. Good, let's go. It's nice to uh, actually have some. So let's start with the um, let's start with the hook. So you got uh, what, like a three parts? How many going on here? Yeah, um, it's very interesting. Actually. What's so interesting about that? I try to be as as musical as possible with. A small part like that, that intro, you know. Make you shy. Okay, so that's the main. Maybe I just feel like I'm so. Then you got that panned left. I'm mm. on the ground and hear you call. But it's, it's up there with the harmony, so. Maybe I just feel like I'm so. And then you've got this one panned, right? Doing kind of like the same notes, but not the exact same inflections. Yeah. Maybe I just feel like I'm so. That one's a bit longer. So it's, it feels very raw. It's not super overly produced. Mm, yeah. That was nice. Obviously, nice. It's, there's the auto tune that's that's working overtime there. Yeah. Can you actually sing, or can you only <laughs> sing with auto tune? I can sing. Mm. Uh, but you know, mm. we, we just had to go in with the auto tune mm. there. So this joint, you actually, I listened to the first version or first incarnation of this joint, and you actually wrote this as a rap. And I heard this first verse being rapped, and then afterwards you came back and decided to sing it. Yeah. Um, after we had, uh, you know, built the the track from scratch, it it just needed that that sung, you know, effect on it. Um, with with just the rap, it felt it felt too clean, and you know there was nothing, you know, creating that mm. nice vibe. So maybe I just feel like I'm so. So that's the three part, and I mean we can look at some of the vocal processing chains here on the channel strip. So you've got everything going through the ESA, EQ compression. I don't know what you're doing with the compression. Compression. Maybe Compression. Maybe uh, just it's quite. Like him so. It's quite light. I'm on the ground and hear you call. It's just leveling things out. I saw the light and and then of course, fly. the Logic's pitch correction, then which is a stock plugin, and gives us the auto tune kind of effect. You obviously have to tune Maybe it just feel like to the so. key. I'm on the ground and hear you. Okay, let's look at the main. What? How different is this? Maybe I just feel like I'm so. So that was the, kind of the, the lead. Um, even when I perform the song, that's the, the parts that I use. Mm. And then the crowd usually responds with those other parts. Okay. Okay. So that's the lead vocal, yeah. and the others would be like the backing part. Yeah. And that's essentially the hook of the song. It's going to come back to that every time. Yeah. And talk to us about the meaning of the, the hook there. Maybe I just feel like I'm Saul. Who's Saul? Who's Paul? So, um, you know, in, in the Bible, it speaks of, of a guy called Paul, who was Saul before. And, you know, it speaks of his transformation. If you use his story in Acts, um, of how he, met, uh, how he met Jesus and how he was struck down and he only got to see Jesus when he was blind. So, you know, this is what I'm trying to bring That's across actually deep. You only got to see when you was blind. Yeah, so in, it's the same story with me. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't blind physically, but, you know, spiritually there's always some sort of blindness yeah, happening. Yeah. And that's when we see Jesus. So, stop, stop. Okay, let's look at the verse uh, vocals. So, what have we got going here? So, we're going to start with the backing here and we'll come to the lead afterwards. Um, the backing we obviously we obviously pushed it quite far back in the mix. 
and it's got a lot of depth. I can hear a lot of reverb on there, and it's also been uh, it's also been high pass quite a bit. So you got it rolled off at two hundred. Pretty bright. The 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 five point six uh, K range is pushed very hard, accentuating that kind of those high frequencies. So it feels very thin, breathy, whispery. Mm. And even the way the vocals have been produced, you're singing it in a very breathy, yeah, breathy way. So it's definitely not driving the song forward, but it's just accentuating what what the lead will do. So let's uh, shall we look at the lead vocal? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I hate the whole of Spali. I did it for the party. I only came to make it kill it. So the signal, it's obviously way drier than the backing vocals, mm. but it's also a lot more meaty. You don't have that much rolled off. Uh, it feels more solid. Although, I mean, there's a lot of, in the mix, we need a lot of reductive processing. You can see most of what we've done with the curve is cut and then... I know you did this. You pushed it way high. You've got like a 11 dB boost at 7.3, which is insane. Who yeah. taught you to do stuff that like was, that? It was very experimentative. No, uh, dude. Nobody ever does that. How no one ever, you no do one ever that? does it. But, you know, when you do it and then you create this new sound and then it just it brings the vocal out. Yeah. So the vocal does become very crispy, very bright and i don't think we'd normally do that or we no, do it to any mix <laughs> but on this one it worked and it gave the song a very polished kind of lead vocal um uh, very crispy and i think it also complements the way you um the way you deliver the vocal yeah definitely <laughs> i think if you had rapped this verse it wouldn't have worked as well it wouldn't have worked. and that eq wouldn't have worked either oh, no. MC Hammer because he can't touch. Nah, I got it all wrong. Life so you kind of sing wrong. rapping and moving strong. in and out of so singing, so rapping. Wrong. Yeah, but I, I enjoyed uh, doing that. I think after I had all the lyrics written down and the, the music was done, it was just a fun process of just, you know, playing with my flow. Yeah. And you, I, I'd never get to do that. So yeah. I got to really so jump let's, into that. So let's have a listen to it without the, what's this thing called? Without the pitch correction, which is Logic's version of Autotune. I hate the whole of Spali. I did it for the party. I only came to make it kill it. And did you record this through the autotune um, with, the, with the input monitoring on so you could actually hear the effect on the fly or did you add the effect afterwards? Can you remember? I actually did it afterwards uh, because I remember it sounded weird in my ears when I had did it initially. The autotune going. Yeah. It's interesting because some cats, I know a um, uh, cool homie that we worked with a couple of years ago, B Stays, he loves recording autotune with the plug-in on. on and uh, that's just it helps him deliver mm. it helps him vibe and he's nailed that thing to a T but it's kind of to each his own exactly, some cats yeah, prefer exactly. to to add the effect on afterwards right. exactly. See him can't touch. Nah, I got it all wrong. Lifelong, I've been living life and wrong. it's interesting when, when you put the rap vocal through the so auto tune and I'm so wrong but I'm afraid I want to do it right but I want to get paid Slave to my and obviously pain. you set up the vocal for the auto tune to yeah. work because you've got all the bends going on yeah I'm gonna get paid you yeah. got all the pitch bends going on in your vocal, which helps the it accentuates the the the, the, yeah. the auto tunes work. My own thoughts, like to my brain, cool man. The pain, uh, ways, and that was basically it. I think uh, after this, it just goes back to the hook. What we did um, do was this, the the B part of the of the chorus and. I think that's the most fun part of the, of the whole song. So let's go to the B part. <laughs> Can just, so let's have a look at what, yeah? It just reinforces, it's just like, you know, drives God, the point home that, you know, we're all really God, nice in the world. Shy, and, you know, God, I'm going to make you shine. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what the song shy. is. That's, yeah. God, yeah. Make you shine. God, make you shine. Okay, you've got a nice delay going on on the, the rap hook. Let's see what that is. So it's running through a tape delay. 
The wet signal is pretty low and the feedback is pretty low, but there's enough for it just to, just to make room. To make, yeah, there's enough, enough to create room, but also enough to create bounce. Mm. Very funky. Okay, there's one more thing I wanted to do, and that was look at the monster vocal in the second verse. At the moment, it's off. So let's have a listen to it with the... Uh, what I call the monster vocal on. <laughs> okay, so initially, I remember when we tracked this, I said to you, hey, I want to do some pitch down effects on it. And I think we overdid it initially because I made a copy of your initial vocal yeah. and copied it down onto this monster track. But I copied quite a bit of the vocal, so I had this part as well. My deeper faces in the silver case, I'm on the paper chase right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we kept that for the final mix. No, nah, we didn't. Faces in the silver case, I'm I on think the paper chase right now. At some point, you were like, nah, fancy places we're just with overdoing the it. Yeah. Celebrate you right now. Yeah, and that's cool production decisions when you go, hey, are we just overdoing it? Are we overproducing the song just because we can do this cool effect? Yeah. Or is this actually adding to the movement of the song? Is it helping move the song forward? If not, it's just too much. Cut it. Yeah. Less is more. Um, but this worked. Yeah, definitely. So what did we do? We basically took this vocal. And then copied it. And ran it through... Hey, all these trade secrets. I'm telling mm -hmm. you. But it's all stock plugins. So ran it through a pitch down, like a full octave down, minus 12 full octave down of Logic's uh, vocal transformer and push the signal all the way wet. Also pull the formant down to give it that monster feel so yeah. that it doesn't sound human. And it's that kind of like that chopped and screwed. Is it chopped and screwed or screwed and yeah, chopped? Yeah, it's, it's chopped and screwed. Chopped but screwed. just to say, it's it's very amazing just what um, the guys at, at Logic just are giving away, like right after you've bought Logic. They're, yeah. they're literally giving a whole studio's worth of um, of plugins and, yeah. you know, just different resources. Yeah. Um, and, it, I mean, if if you aren't satisfied, then you can obviously get uh, um, external yeah, resources. Yeah, third-party like, stuff, yeah. The stuff that you already have, you can create hits. Like there's, there's no excuse for you to not make good music when you have such quality um, sounds. And, Simply and just using the stock plugin. Yeah. Cool man. No need to, no need to use cracked plugins. No, no, sir. No, <laughs> and this sir. is not a cracked version of Logic either. Yeah, you can't get that on Apple, unfortunately. Well, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> cool man. I think that's it. Episode seven of Unpacked the yeah. Track. Ugu Kanya by Mons. Uh, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please uh, share, like, post some comments. Tell us what you think. Give us some ideas. Mm. We'd love to hear from you and see how we can improve this thing. If you've missed any of the previous videos, then check out the playlist. It's called Unpack the Track. It's on our YouTube channel, Exilic Music. Click through on the links at the end of this video to uh, catch up on anything that you've missed. Thanks for watching Exilic Music, exilic.co.za.